Hey guys, I'm Ragan here tonight on this momentous occasion. It's April 16th, and that means it's 416 day, which is basically the best day ever to celebrate the HK416, which this almost is. This is the civilian roll marked version, uh, the MR223, and this happens to be the A3, which is patterned after the 416A5. And actually the A3 is really cool because the civilian version is much closer to the original whereas the original MR2 or MR556 was different, didn't take the same, the upper and lower connections was different, it wasn't mil spec. Lots of things that were really undesirable about that, but now they've really corrected it for the A3. And uh, unfortunately, it's still missing some things. Like this one is missing a gas block, which was an adjustable gas block, sorry. And that was the other main feature besides the ambi lower of going to the 416A5. Well, this is a 416 upper, but it's not an A5, it's an A1, uh, so still, Still awesome, still super pumped to have one of those, uh, to have one of those handy. And the 14.5 the uppers, which this one is, were shooting pretty nice. They weren't nearly as overgassed as the, uh, or at least they didn't, they didn't, weren't plagued by the issues of the overgassed or the harsh recoil of the overgassed 10.4s. Anyways, that was, uh, that was A5. Uh, apparently there's A7 coming out now. I'm pretty stoked. I just heard that on, on my buddy's page today. Uh, Richard Movie Arms, quick shout out to him, or Richard underscore Movie Arms if you're on Instagram. He posted, he's the one that reminded me it was, it was 416 days a day. I posted about SIGs, so I kind of dropped the ball there. So I'm trying to make up for it with this video here tonight. And uh, he also dropped some other knowledge, which is that the A7 is coming out. And I'm going to tell you what um, changes with the A7 uh, at the end of this video here. I don't want to get too bogged down because this is a gear review, a gear review video, and I want to talk about gear. So today's gear is this handy dandy little optic mount from Kinetic Development Group. Oh, such a cool little optic. And uh, just a quick disclaimer, this isn't brand new anymore. Uh, this is in 2009, last year, sorry, 2009, last decade. Last year, 2019, they did a small update. And the new current spec models now, these three holes aren't here anymore. There's impressions where they were, but they're, they're still filled in. It's still a solid mount. They just claimed strengthening the unit by doing that. So mine I got about two years ago. And I've been using it a ton. So if you guys have watched my videos for any length of time, you'll have probably seen my shooting videos and you'll have probably noted that I've used this optic rig in almost all of them. And it's because it's so friggin' handy to pop this thing off. Literally, there's a little, little uh, tab there. Push that in, push the whole thing in, and it rocks right off. That simple. And it is basically supposed to return to zero as long as you put it in the same space. And I haven't tested that any far length of time. I probably should do that, but I haven't. And I've just been shooting steel at this with the inside, you know, 80 yards. And it's always been great for me. Just like that, it's locked right on. And it can always wiggle a little bit because it does get tighter. And it's, it's patented cam lock system is pretty cool. Yeah, and I got really tight on there. And that's actually my one gripe. Because sometimes it gets really sticky and means a little bit of persuasion, you know, sometimes via a rubber mount. I'm gonna set this guy aside right now. Um, Cool little, uh, cool little blaster that I've been playing around with recently. But uh, anyways, back to this thing. Patented cam lock system inside here. And it's, ah, it's really slick, so I can trip it by pushing this little button in here along with this. That'll allow this to pop out. And this would be locked. So this kind of simulates, you know, that's engaged with the pick rail there. And now it's allowed this to, you know, this to pop out, this to clamp down. And then of course you just put, this is so you, you can't just push the overall thing in. I mean, you can to this point, but it won't unlock. You have to trip this little guy as well, this little spring here. That allows it to go all the way in, unlocks the system, and then you just roll it right off. So really slick, again, patented cam system, and they do other things as well. So they've actually even got a few different versions of this mount as well. This is the lower one-third co or one-third co-witness, um, or lower one-third rather. There's also an absolute co-witness version where this is just dropped down a little bit. There's none of this, there isn't this little bridge up here. And uh, these units right here are 139. They've got cheaper versions that are basically just a, a universal riser that makes use of this same mechanism. Those started about $89 and then all the way up to $225 for your uh, your low power variable optics. And they've got you know dual ring setup um, for 25 mil all the way up to 34 mil, uh, 30 mil as well. So lots of options and honestly just a really slick little setup. I really like this thing. What else can I tell you? Well, 2.7 grams, so it's also super lightweight. And uh, this one is set up for the aim point bodies. So T1s, T2s, H1, H2, anything else that shares the same footprint as an aim point. So you can also check out the Minox RV1s, which is a low cost alternative to an aim point. I'm guessing Primary Arms has one that probably shares the same floor plate as well. 
And they make a version of this for the Patrol Optics as well. Uh, what's the other thing? Oh, Trigicon MROs. They also have a, a base plate, you know, rig that, that attached to them as well. So quite a bit of variability with these things. And uh, I really dig it. I wouldn't actually mind having a couple more. So let's get this on the 416, which is the whole point all along. So just rock and lock. And she's on there. It's it's awesome. I just that's why I use them so much. They're just so convenient. But uh, anyways, that's that's really about all I can tell you about these things. They're just they're they're pretty inexpensive. They've been around for a little while. Kinetic Development Group also makes rails for 416s and 417s, M-lock versions. They make some nice stuff there. They make a lot of components for scars. If you guys have a scar, I'm sure you've heard of these guys because they've made a ton of cool enhancements for that platform. And they also were the guys that originated those little, those little M-lock quick attach pick sections that go onto M-lock uh, rail. And that made use of a very similar mechanism to this guy here. So cool stuff, innovative company. Quick shout out to AJ at Kinetic Development Group. I met him at SHOT Show this past year and uh, really digging his, his rails for the 416 and 417. I'm definitely gonna have to grab some of those down the road and get them on some of the guns. So anyways, we're gonna wrap up <clears throat> returning to the A7 before the bonus gun. Uh, the A7, I pointed at this thing earlier for a reason. Uh, Richard mentioned in one of his comments that yeah, it was coming out soon. So I know what changed and apparently I know why it changed. So again, this is reference. My reference here is Richard underscore movie arms. He knows way more about guns than I do and he's also got way more guns. He, he runs the biggest or owns the biggest um, movie armaments company in Canada, which is in, it's in Toronto. They've done a lot of cool cool movies like, like um, Suicide Squad. Uh, if you see the Netflix version, that, that Polar, the movie, the one that, if, if you didn't see the movie, you probably at least saw the quad, uh, it was two, two M2s and then two M240s and they were on a remote control. And then while this guy was like, you know, facing off this whole crew of SWAT guys, he kind of just like presses the button and it's just like, boop, 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 boop. they're just destroying, annihilating with these two remote controlled units. And the guys from Movie Arms came up with that. I'm not sure if it was Charles or Graham or, Chandler or Richard that came up with that idea, but someone did and it was freaking awesome and that made that movie for me. Also the opening sniper shot with the DRD Tactical Kabari, that semi-auto 338 Lapua, that was a money shot as well. Except for that thing with the laser, but we'll leave it at that. Anyways, so the A7, uh, the change. So the reason they're, they're making a new model of it and they call it the A7 is the selector. They're changing the selector. Instead of this being, you know, safe here, semi at 90 degrees, and then, you know, full auto, if this thing flips, if, if it did that, mine doesn't obviously, but if it did, full auto would be over here with the full 180 degree throw. Now what they're doing with theirs is they're going safe, uh, sorry, safe, and then I believe semi at 45 degrees and then full at 90. And what they're trying to do there is they're trying to mimic the G36 uh, selector just to make it easier for, for units that are, that are switching between both or that use both. I'm not, I'm speculating there, but basically what I heard was to make the switch easier. So. Um, that's, that's cool. Plus I'm a fan of 45 degree selectors. And if I could play with full auto, I'd be a fan of having another 45 degree throw over to that. But, uh, nonetheless, cool stuff. And thanks again to Richard for posting 416 today. I, I posted SIGs. I totally dropped the ball, but he, uh, he helped me pick it up posting at 416 and tomorrow I'll, I'll make up for tomorrow as well. So anyways, uh, we'll just leave that as a hint. Check my Instagram if you want to see more and, uh, bonus gun time, Keltec. These things are a hot commodity today. The whole pandemic crap going around. People just seem to be loving these Keltax from following their social media. They basically can't keep them in stock. They're sold out on all the forums. You just can't find these things and they're selling for a premium right now. So I thought I'd bust this guy out. And uh, honestly, nice trigger on these things. So I might uh, I might just try and get some content on one of these guys. Do this as one of the upcoming video of the week. So I'm sure lots of guys are interested in it. So we'll, we'll do some running. So. That's the show for tonight, guys. Thanks a ton. Armin Gunn, out.